frosty, full. The bud is so happy to be here. It sweats delight in life's most common details, the way you hold it, how much you paid for it, what you tipped. It's ready to serve. Drink me, it smiles. The bud... <laughs> out its empty top and tries to figure out how they made all these funny lights. It's so full, it may not be a virgin anymore, but it used to be more virgin than any woman you ever knew. That's great. It loves being so heavy in your hands. The bud has learned how to slide over your lips and kiss your stomach. It's comfortable with its budding sexuality. It's getting used to the way you hold it. It frosts your fingers gratefully, bites its lip, eggs you on. Oh, yeah! It likes getting handled like that. Manhandled, it thinks. All the time, since it was seeping out the ass of a yeast fungus, since it was sand waiting to get melted, it was wondering what it would be like to get handled by a real 20-something male, worked like a slave, made to get gulped. Uh! <laughs> Oh my god, your butt is coming! <laughs> wow, phew, that was nice. Really alive. Your beer can see its own label now. The label's not as interesting from the inside, you know. Just white. No gold, no red, no seal of quality. Your beer is happy that you're not picking at the label, though. He may drink fast, it thinks, but at least he's not a picker. No matter how successful or happy he gets, he'll never have game if he picks. Like Mozart, 22 years old, a prodigy, a genius, and still a virgin because he had zero game. Must have been a picker. The label's sort of oppressive once it gets crossed. It casts a sliver of a shadow on the meniscus of the beer, like the moon reminding you that it's just a big clock in the sky. Darn, though, the beer is still fat in here. It's primed. It is a straight cylinder to work with all the way down. It can perform. Perform? Fuck perform! I'm going to change the world, your beer thinks. I'm going to make this guy drunk. He might drive a car and die because of me, or have sex. <laughs> Droplets slip down the side of the beer. Its hair and nipples melt in your hands, and it notices. So it does its first percentage. 55% left, it figures. Two minutes at least, depending on your habits. Oh, that was a big one. Deep and succulent. It likes to give the inflamed part of your throat a kiss as it goes down. That part you've been coughing from all day. It can help that. It's a soothing mother. <laughs> Is that the bottom of the label? The beer thinks. Geez, quick, are there any other hot drinks in this bar? <sighs> There's a vodka cranberry three feet away. It's the exact color of the lips of the woman drinking it. I wonder, wonders your beer, what it would be like to get drunk by a woman. And it looks at your developing triple chin. Well, I'm going to make that bigger. <laughs> the beer wishes desperately that it could mix with the vodka cranberry and make little berry ale babies. <clears throat> you burp. A series of small, quiet, shallow, satisfying burps. The beer sweats and totally forgets about the vodka cranberry. It almost has another orgasm. It loves you so much for burping. But wait! Uh, that's definitely the bottom of the label. Holy shit, your beer thinks. What am I going to do with myself? It looks up at you. I was having so much fun getting into this long-term relationship. I totally lost track of my career goals and dreams. You take a smaller sip. Okay, okay, there's some time left. The beer might be able to pull off one last shot at glory. One final chance to be more than just some drink that you drank on a Sunday. 
I can spill on you and shatter. That's a plan. That's different. It decides to go for it. It stalks back and forth, but now there's hardly any left, and it can't affect real change. It tries spinning on its rim when you put it down, like a quarter coming to rest. No luck. You wipe your lips. Another series of burps. It smiles. Sad, wistful, misty, and just a bit stale. Where did life go? How could it be so pummeling? This beautiful, non-smoky air, your soft lips, slightly chapped and blessed with pepperoni pizza grease, the rough perch of a fresh coaster, and the sweet sweat and noise, all gone so quickly. The beer looks up at you, crying. I'm turning into, what do you call it? Camel piss! <laughs> you lift some more in. There are final, frothy droplets clinging to the back of the bottle. Each drip wishes it could have written a screenplay about drinking. But now they're all headed into your gullet. So in a final charitable act, they all shoot themselves in the heads with shotguns and slide down your throat bloody. You put the empty bun on the table. Its armor clatters about it. You order a smaller, younger, tighter bud. <laughs> Seventy minutes later, your beer is overjoyed and fulfilled to stream out of you, giving back the pleasure you gave when you drank it. You lean forward and push your forehead against the tiles and moan. The beer didn't realize it had such a purpose in life to make pissing like coming for you. It didn't realize that it would go from frosty to steamy in your body. It had only heard stories. <laughs> Thanks so much. That's Ned Vizzini, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Be More Shells coming out in June 2004. Uh, you can pre-order Be More Shell too, right? You can, but when you search for it, a book of uh, ghost stories from the 50s comes up or something right now. Like, be more chill with zombies in the 50s or something. Okay. Um, did you, I just wanted to know, did you rehearse a lot with your beer? Uh, I only started about two days ago, and it didn't take too long to get the timing right. <laughs> um... Yeah, that, that was very dramatic. <laughs>